In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. As we gather, we pause to savor God's mercy, to recognize God's generosity toward us, and to call to mind those times we have failed to receive it in grace, the times we have failed to love as God has invited us to love. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who have commanded us to listen to your beloved Son, be pleased, we pray, to nourish us inwardly by your word, that with spiritual sight made pure, we may rejoice to behold your glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. God put Abraham to the test. He called to him, Abraham. Here I am, he replied. Then God said, Take your son Isaac, your only one, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah. There you shall offer him up as a holocaust on a height that I will point out to you. When they came to the place of which God had told him, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. Then he reached out and took the knife to slaughter his son. But the Lord's messenger called to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he answered. Do not lay your hand on the boy, said the messenger. Do not do the least thing to him. I know now how devoted you are to God, since you did not withhold from me your own beloved son. As Abraham looked about, he spied a ram caught by its horns in the thicket. So he went and took the ram and offered it up as a holocaust in place of his son. Again the Lord's messenger called to Abraham from heaven and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you acted as you did, and not withholding from me your beloved son, I will bless you abundantly, and make your descendants as countless as the stars of the sky and the sands of the seashore. Your descendants shall take possession of the gates of their enemies, and in your descendants all the nations of the earth shall find blessing. All this because you obeyed my command. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I believed, even when I said, I am greatly afflicted. Precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant, the son of your handmaid. You have loosed my bonds. To you will I offer sacrifice of thanksgiving, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. My vows to the Lord I will pay in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the house of the Lord, in your midst, O Jerusalem. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, if God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but handed him over for us all, how will he not also give us everything else along with him? Who will bring a charge against God's chosen ones? It is God who acquits us. Who will condemn? Christ Jesus, it is who, he who died, or rather was raised who also is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. From the shining cloud of the Father's voice is heard, this is my beloved Son, listen to him. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus took Peter, James, and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, 
and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no fuller on earth could bleach them. Then Elijah appeared to them, along with Moses, and they were conversing with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus in reply, Rabbi, it is good that we are here. Let us make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He hardly knew what to say. They were so terrified. Then a cloud came, casting a shadow over them. From the cloud came a voice, This is my beloved Son. Listen to him. Suddenly, looking around, they no longer saw anyone but Jesus alone with them. As they were coming down from the mountain, he charged them not to relate what they had seen to anyone, except when the Son of Man had risen from the dead. So they kept the matter to themselves, questioning what rising from the dead meant. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Some songs stick in your head, and they never go away, unfortunately. I still remember a great hit from the 1970s Catholic repertoire as the guitar masses were exploding all over the place and all sorts of new music was being produced as the church was coming out of the Second Vatican Council. And I can remember this song that would be sung all the time at our school masses uh, in those uh, heady days of the 1970s with the guitars ablazing. And there was this one song with this repetitive refrain, which was, if God is for us, who can be against us if the Spirit of God has set us free? Even though it's Lent, I will still save you the torture of singing a few verses for you. But it just went over and over and over again and kept coming back to this sing-songy refrain of if God is for us, who can be against us? If the Spirit of God has set us free. It's stuck there in my head. And yet, it so clearly emerges out of that second reading, but emerges out of this central truth that the Christian community has learned over time, which is that to come to know God is to receive a freedom that only God can give. The mystics talk about it. Ignatius talks about it all the time, the spiritual freedom that we hunger for and unbinding, as it were, of whatever inside of us holds us back from loving as God has asked us to, of following Jesus as God has invited us to. Freedom a freedom to follow, a freedom to reprioritize life, a freedom to let go of some things, a freedom to step more completely into friendship with God. When Jorge Bergoglio was chosen as Pope and became Pope Francis, in an interview, Cardinal Francis George, who was serving as the Archbishop of Chicago at that time, said to a reporter, The most important thing and the most incredible thing about Pope Francis, he said, is he's free. The reporter was a little perplexed on what that meant and what the cardinal was getting at. And the cardinal tried to explain that he had never seen another person like Jorge Bergoglio, now Pope Francis, who operated from this internal freedom, seemed to have that spiritual freedom that someone like St. Ignatius talked about a long time ago. An ability, because of his friendship with God, to step into the challenge of leading the global Catholic community. Pope Francis has spoken about this himself. He will say that he had a deep and profound experience of the Holy Spirit during the conclave that chose him, and in those quiet moments before coming coming out onto the balcony, at St. Peter's Square. He spoke of and continues to speak of a a certain peace and freedom that came over him to do the work that was ahead of him. There's some freedom that comes when God draws us close. There's some shifting around that happens for us. 
It's got something to do with leaving things behind. It's certainly got something to do with a shifting of the priorities in the practical decisions we make about how to spend our day, where to spend our time, what gets our attention, what draws us into deeper life. The simple choices that we make in the course of a day about where our energy will go and how we will pay attention to what God might be asking us to notice. Peter, James, and John are taken up the mountainside with Jesus in this telling of the story of the transfiguration. It is a profound encounter they have with God in the prophet, in the lawgiver, and in Jesus. And in that voice of God that clarifies for them in this awe-struck moment that Jesus, this is my beloved son, listen to him. And in that encounter for Peter, James, and John, there must have been a newfound freedom. That is, in coming that close to the divine and being drawn, having their attention directed very clearly by God to Jesus, all of a sudden things change for Peter, James, and John. And the priorities shift, and the desire to stay closer to Jesus grows. And they make their way down the mountainside to go back to the regular stuff of their life, but never to be the same. And this isn't to say that they're perfect because of this encounter. They're still deeply flawed, and they will fail their friend, Jesus. They will be stumbling disciples like you and me. They don't understand everything clearer and perfectly, because we're told by Mark, Matthew at the end of this gospel passage that they're sort of debating with each other what rising from the dead might mean. Their hearts and minds have lots of questions, and yet they know the grace to stay close to him. The newfound freedom will demand something of them, that the choices they make will allow them to stay closer, to be with him. The freedom we long for, the freedom which is the deep, deep desire of our hearts and our lives can only be found in the encounter with God. And in this Lenten season, we are invited down a pathway of attention, of repentance, of conversion, of reconciliation, to reflect more deeply on our lives and to see those moments and experiences of the presence of God where God has drawn us close to recognize that God is seeking us out, that God desires to draw us ever closer, that God seeks to give us the freedom that our hearts so desire. Our prayer then for Lent, in the words of a better 1970s song, might be simply that day by day we might see him more clearly, love him more dearly, and follow him more ne nearly. May we know the grace that comes from the closeness of God. May we know the freedom that only God can give. We bring our prayers to the God who loves us, the God who knows us better than we know ourselves. This gives us the courage to voice our petitions. For the church, that our truest selves, beloved daughters and sons of God, may be revealed more and more through our Lenten observances, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For our elected officials, that God will inspire their understanding of the current issues and guide them in addressing the economic, health care, and safety issues of our society, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For renewal of our society, that God will heal those wounded by prejudice and injustice and help everyone to work together for the common good, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are awaiting transformation of their lives, for those struggling with addictions, those who are imprisoned, and those bound by fear, pain, or anger, that God's love will free them and bring them to wholeness, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for the Loyola Academy community, that as we entrust ourselves to God more deeply this Lent, we may come to see the face of God more clearly. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, particularly those who have had COVID-19, that Christ will welcome them into eternal joy and give peace to all who grieve their death. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Hear us, O God, hear our prayers. We bring them to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. By the mingling of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this bread and wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual food and drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, friends, that this, our sacrifice, may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all God's holy church. May this sacrifice, O Lord, we pray, cleanse us of our faults and sanctify your faithful in body and mind for the celebration of the Paschal festivities through Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts and let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For after he had told the disciples of his coming death on the holy mountain, he manifest in them, manifested to them his glory, to show even by the testimony of the law and the prophets that the passion leads to the glory of the resurrection. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty, without end, we acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts that we have brought for your consecration, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. 
May he make us make of us an everlasting gift to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles, glorious martyr, St. Ignatius Loyola, and all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Blaise, our Bishop, the order of bishops, the clergy, and all the people that you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of the family you have gathered here before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on us all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. Live and reign forever and ever. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Peace. peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. As we receive these glorious mysteries, we make thanksgiving to you, O Lord, for allowing us, while still on earth, to be partakers even now of the things of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our Mass is ended. We go in peace. Thanks be to God. Thank you.